So let's look at a typical drawing. There's a path, there's trees, and there's woodland behind. Now what, do you, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine you're actually in the forest. So we're not looking at this photograph which I've taken. You're there where I was, and all around you is woodland and forest. So where do you start? What you need to do is to, I call it the five steps of starting a painting. Number one, you've got to decide what elements are going to be in your drawing or painting. You want to mark the top and bottom on your drawing or canvas. Number five, you want to put that mark on your canvas. Now we're all set. Now we're all ready to go. You've decided what you're going to do and you've, you've got this kind of thing going on and you've actually marked off on the canvas where it is that you're going to start. So let's have a look at this drawing and see how it develops. Now you notice I'm using some charcoal dust and this is just charcoal which has been ground down or I've collected the dust over many a year and I'm just putting it on with an ordinary builder's brush. So if you make a mark and it's wrong, well, don't worry. The, the mark is there to help you. So it's a guide. So you can then re-take another look at it and make a slight adjustment as you need. Without a mark being on the paper, you've got no idea where, where to go. So any mark is better than no mark at all. Just try and get it ish in the right place for this. this and yes, it, it does help. And you can see now what I'm doing is I'm just putting the rough guides. I've got the rough guide of where the horizon is, a rough guide of the shape of the path. If, as I progress the drawing, I feel, oh, you know, it could be a few mil to the left or right or up or down, no big deal. Make it. Make the change. Um, we worry too much about making changes to paintings and drawings. Don't one thing. Don't, don't at any point feel you, you can't make a change. It's better to make a change at this stage um, than to go to a painting and you're using colour, your, your colour's mixed up, you're using the colours you've mixed and then going, oh yeah, that's in the wrong place. Don't do that. It's not a good idea. This is interesting. You notice I've gone straight into putting the shadow in. Now, the three rules or three rules not really rules they're the three main features of any drawing and any painting that artists will constantly talk about and especially as a teacher we, we teach all the time is proportion line and mass do bear in mind when you're looking at this or you you uh, are doing these sketches yourselves they're not really drawings if you're going to do a drawing you're going to have what 30 hours on a drawing to give it justice, three, four, five days maybe. This is an hour. It's, it's at best, like I said, it's a design stage. It's me going, I wonder if this works. So just using the putter over again, cleaning as I go, because I'm lifting off quite a lot of charcoal in this area. A few marks here and there. We are so near done this now. I might just lift off, here we go, look, I'll just lift, lift off a little bit of a pathway just to bring it back. But I think really it's, uh, it's a good sketch to go. My thoughts are trying to, I don't know, just a sketch a day. It, it doesn't take a long time, but, but it tunes your eye and it makes you practice the things that we need to practice. And I think that's basically... And that's basically it. The imprimatura method has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. The question is, why is it so popular? The reasons I use it and why it's still very popular with artists today is that it's, it's fast, it's easy, there's it's nothing difficult about this. It's the easiest way to start a painting. And all you're focusing on is proportion, line and mass. Mass being tonal values. This stain is made up of French ultramarine blue, raw umber. You can use burnt sienna as well. This is a stain. It's not actually painting I'm putting on. It's a stain where you, you will be able to um, lift off very quickly, very easily. So we put the stain on. Now you can see I'm going to use a cloth. Now don't use tissue. 
those two tools, that's um, a knitting needle and I'm using a, a Rosemary & Co brush. All of my brushes I use are Rosemary & Co. Um, probably the, some of the best brushes you'll ever try and buy in the world and the fraction of the price you'll be able to get them in the shops. Um, it's direct with Rosemary. Now, the, the knitting needle is all about getting an angle between um, two uh, given shapes. So that gives you proportion. That helps you. That gets you a good start. I know exactly now where that tree is on my image because of the angle. Give it a try. Um, I will elaborate this more. We've got uh, drawing videos, tutorials coming out on the um, online school. <coughs> Sorry, the Martin Close Art School uh, dot com. Um, very shortly, within uh, literally within days, uh, they're going to be um, the videos are going to be completed and cut and posted on on the website. So these techniques will be shown again and again. You'll be able to refer to them. Um, it's a very, very easy way of drawing. You can see now the darks going in. So if you look at the tree, which has been cut off, you can see the dark shape at the bottom of it, where the horizon is. This, you can see now I'm putting a, another position of a tree in. And I also take it down and to, there we go. I take it down too far and I kind of go, oh yeah, okay. That's a different tree. So I'll rub it out. Now that's how easy you can make a change. Can can you imagine, bear with me a second, can you imagine if you were you spent hours mixing up your colours and you're using the colours, which is cost, it's cost of materials, and you're putting the colours into the wrong places, well, then you've got a kind of uh, issue because you've got to move it. You've got to, you've got to rub it out, scrape it off. Um, so you've wasted the time, the materials, the colours that you've mixed up for this painting um, in just making a simple error. Now I talk in class a great deal of truth and lie. If something is like this at an angle and you that's the truth, but you've drawn it like this, well it's a lie. You haven't seen the truth. If you can't tell that those two things are different, then you can't see the truth. If you can see the truth, it's like this, but you've drawn it like that or painted like that, you'll go, ah, it's wrong, which means you make a correction. When you're focusing just on this proportion line and mass technique of imprimatura, you're, you'll, you're free to see more of the truth if you really, really look. Of course, in the back of your head, you're not worried about colour. You're not worried about wasting your paints. You're not worried. Well, there's a whole host of things you're not really worried about. All you're focusing on is the correct shape, correct proportion, and correct tonal value. And that's one of the huge beauties of this technique. That's the reason why it's still around hundreds and hundreds of years later on. Um, you know, later, you know. And... It's one of the reasons why it's my favourite way to start a painting of this ilk. Now, we're using a photograph, but this photograph I took, so I stood in the place where this photograph has been taken. Imagine if you transported to that spot. So you, you're not actually looking at a photograph, you're there, you're on the path. Uh, this is actually a walk towards Hardy's Cottage in, in Dorset. Uh, something on the previous stream I couldn't think of and couldn't remember where we were. But it's actually Hardy's Cottage, and it's just over the, that bit of a hill. You follow the path into what is the dark shadow, and you come across Hardy's Cottage. Um, fabulous place to go and go to, by the way. But we have the new forest locally in Dorset. You must have, fo uh, you must have fo forest near, nearby. I would invite you to go and take a sketch pad or just a simple easel set with a couple of colours, a couple of brushes and some solvent and give this a go. I put that point, which I call a proportional point, onto the canvas or drawing on the top line of my drawing or canvas or, or painting. That's it. I'm now ready to start, which is what we did earlier at the beginning of this webinar. Right, let's get back into it. So you can see now the darks, uh, the darkest darks have gone in. 
or going in. Um, the trees, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with where they go. And let's suppose if you're in the forest and you get a tree slightly to the left or slightly to the right, or it's like this or like that, having just said what I've just said, <clears throat> it's not a huge disaster. Uh, it could be that you just, if you step one step to the left or right, you'll have that view anyway. So, so long as it looks tree-esque, forest-esque, uh, believable, you know, it'd be fine, you'll have a good painting. In many cases, most of the time, I can, uh, I will select to move a tree. I'll move a path. I'll do the path in a different direction even. Or I'll stick two photographs together, as I've done with this particular image, and make it up. Um, that's one of the beauties about art. You don't have to follow every rule. You can break as many as you follow. Um, it, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. Anyway, so you can see I'm brushing on some of the stain. Now still, I'm just this is a clean, looks like a clean brush. You're just lifting off. I've got a bit of solvent on there, and it'll lift off the highlight. There you go. I've just made a first mark. Now let me just say something about that mark. It doesn't matter that it's in the perfect spot. The new students are full of fear. Oh, I might get it wrong. So you stand there for half an hour without making a mark. Put a mark in. Doesn't matter if you get it wrong. What matters is you put it in. Imagine this. Um, you're mixing a colour. Well, actually, there's no colour on your palette because you're frightened to put a colour on your palette, which means you don't know if it's too light or too dark or the wrong hue. In other words, it could be too yellow or too green or whatever. But if you put a colour on the palette and it's wrong, ooh, well, now you've got something to analyse. Oh, yeah, look at that colour. It's too dark. Stick a bit of light in. It's too red. Put a bit of green in. Or shift the hue to an orangey red or a purpley red. But the, f the point I'm trying to make is that you have something to work with. Here we have a mark. Already it's, it's gone um, because it was in the wrong place. But it, it's... The mark which you then judge if it's got to go left, right, up, down, wherever it's got to go. Begin to look like the foreground. It's just a value currently. But like all things, value, shape, get it right, right shape, right place, right painting. Well, then I can complicate it. I can put the things in which I need to put in. Actually, but you'll see me now put a bit of uh, detail. Oh, shudder. Uh, in to the implementure stage at this point into this this painting which is it looks like a root or something which is just standing up proud from the foreground area and effectively it, it's just like all shapes doesn't matter it could be a carrot it doesn't matter what it is everything's the same doesn't matter what it is and how you paint it it's all fundamentally a light a dark and a mid-tone under the canvas. Now, in a second, you'll see the easiest way to describe this is I just let the brush dance. I just let it dance all over the place, lifting off as I see, trying to get into this um, place where you, you're not conscious about the recording being made, you're not conscious about anything else around you. It's just you and the forest, and that's it. And you therefore really get into this tight spot of just seeing the truth and replicating what you see. And in I'm beginning to lift off these shapes now. Now very soon I'll start using a brush which is a stipple brush. Um, and you'll, you'll see what I mean by that. You'll, you'll, I don't know if it's, it should be soon. It's, it's like a, it's, it's a flat bottom brush. It's a round brush. I think I'm using, I've got three different sizes. I think I'll use a small one on this. Um, and it really just uh, take, keeps the shape, but it just softens the edges. Um, and it, it just basically, you know, you'll, you'll see in a second. Now, look at this. I'm, I'm using this brush to lift 
some of that foliage. Um, and you'll see me try to lift off. Look at that. It's almost down to the to the white of the board. Not quite. Now, I put this in and, and I set back and, and I say to myself, ah, oh, it's too high. Gosh, another correction. But it's okay. No, yeah, nothing's going to crash down on my head. You can see the gap between the fallen tree and where that highlight uh, foliage is. And it, the gap between is just too great. You'll see me in a second just realise that and I'll bring it further down. Anyway, get back to the painting. Look at this now. Look at those paths. Look at the pathway. I'm working on this edge, making it... I'm just putting a bit more shape into the path. So I want it to... I want it to stand out. I want it to lead somewhere. So some of these, this is the foliage going in, just a bit of light and dark to represent where that uh, plant is. And a bit of dark. Now really popping that out. You can see these highlights now popping out. The shape is there, and this is a, just a dry brush. It's got a bit of solvent on it, and it's been dried out. Um, and it's just popping out these highlights. If the highlight doesn't come out, I dip it in the solvent, make it a little bit wetter, if that's a word, and it will just lift off straight away any paint it comes in contact with. But if it's already wet, then I'll dry the brush and just pop the brush over the wet paint or the wet stain, which is on there, and it, it'll gain. It will take the brush in, take the stain into the brush and lift it off. And looking at this, I can see some areas which I've not really touched on, like this number two tree. It's just a little bit too wonky at the top. It should be straightened out slightly. Um, that's easy to do at the next stage. And I think you'll find that is about it. That's the finished, um, that's the finished uh, imprimatura. So I really hope you've enjoyed that. Um, for me, it's been a very relaxing evening, sitting here, drinking tea, chatting to you. Um, but in essence, this is the easiest way to paint that I know of. You end up with something which you then look at and you go, oh, I know exactly where to stick the paint now. 